problematic use of the internet. What is PUI? Problematic internet use is defined as a person's inability to control his or her own internet use, leading to disruption and impairment in the fulfillment of social, work and personal commitments. Problematic internet usage is becoming more evident in our society. However, due to the fast digital transition, it is a relatively new and developing field of study in mental health sciences. Two of the most important psychiatric and diagnostic guides have not yet completely recognized all of the behaviors that are within the PUE umbrella, ICD-11. The International Classification of Diseases is the global standard for systematic recording, reporting, analysis, interpretation and comparison of mortality and morbidity data. This manual is developed by the World Health Organization, WHO, involving several clinicians, statisticians, classification experts and IT professionals from different countries of the world. This team constantly works on its update, having available the 11th edition as the most recent one. DSM-5 The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders defines and classifies different mental disorders. More than 200 experts in mental health participated in the creation of the last fifth edition, becoming a manual of more than 10 years of accumulated effort. These important diagnostic guides do not address problematic internet use, which emphasizes how difficult it is to keep up with the speed at which technology is developing, how our society is reacting to new tools and trends, and how this affects mental health. It is hoped that as the experts' knowledge expands, more comprehensive editions of these important documents will cover the whole range of the problematic online behaviors, offering more precise guidelines for diagnosis, treatment, and better support for those impacted by these new issues. The PUI Umbrella the Manifesto for a European Research Network into Problematic Usage of the Internet incorporates as an umbrella term a range of repetitive, impairing behaviors. Social networking, gambling, gaming, purchasing, viewing pornography, cyberbullying, cyberchondria. Maybe you are wondering, what is wrong in these behaviors? As they have become part of the daily lives of specific communities, in the digital age, behaviors including social media, checks, online gaming, shopping, surfing, etc. are often seen as normal. Nevertheless, it is very important to pay attention and review the nature of these behaviors. They can turn harmful when they are carried out in extreme circumstances, such as a constant obsession in using them. When these actions begin to negatively impact a person's everyday functioning, mental health, or general well-being, they may become a problematic usage of the Internet, PUI. In our modern world, there is a thin line between responsible Internet use and harmful use. Internet is a necessary component of contemporary life and makes communication, work, and pleasure easier. However, it is important to know when using it becomes obsessive and dangerous. Gaming disorder Gaming disorder is when a person has a frequent and obsessive behavior in playing video games. Below, you will find some categories of online games that can cause this disorder. Massively multiplayer Online role-playing game MMORPGs they are characterized by settings in which players can interact, accomplish missions, and create alliances. The never-ending content and the social component may make players hard to quit. First-person shooters, FPS. They are recognized for their intense action sequences and competitive multiplayer options. Their addictive nature is partly attributed to the adrenaline rush, the improvement of skills or real rankings. Battle Royale games. 
These games mainly involve many players who start with minimal equipment and try to eliminate the rest of its opponents. They include exploration, survival elements, etc., making the evolution of the game unpredictable. Therefore, it raises obsession and refusal to stop playing. Apps for mobile devices These games are easily accessible and frequently free to play. They are made with features like daily prizes in mind, which can drive frequent play and eventually lead to addiction. Also, many of them are not complicated to complete their levels, making gamers more motivated to continue playing. Multiplayer Online Battle Arena MOBA It involves two teams fighting against each other. Each player controls one character that has specific abilities, which evolves throughout the game. Social Simulation Games these games are a simulation of real-time activities, for example, the construction of a theme park, the creation and management of an airport, etc. Gamers are able to exploit their creativity, customization, management and other skills. These games can be extremely time-consuming and addictive due to their flexible design. Online games have different factors that contribute to gaming disorders, such as obtaining extra lives, complete levels and missions, rewards and prices, microtransactions, online interactions with other people, adrenaline shots, win reputation, characters, customization, engaging narratives. This disorder is included in the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders and the ICD-11 from the World Health Organization. The ICD-11 establishes some boundaries of gaming with other disorders and conditions. Boundary with hazardous gaming. Boundary with gambling disorder. Boundary with bipolar and related disorders. Boundary with obsessive compulsive disorder. Boundary with disorders due to substance use. Boundary with the effects of psychoactive substances, including medications. Gambling disorder. Gambling disorder is a clinical picture characterized by repetitive and persistent gambling behavior. This disorder is included in the ICD-11 and the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. DSM-5. Some of the different applications of online gambling are Online Casino Table Games There are several games that can be played online, such as Baccarat, Craps, Roulette, Blackjack, etc. Some of them, gamblers need to have skills and luck. Machines They simulate as the ones that are in real casinos, such as the classic three real slots. Games with a live dealer. These games boost excitement and engagement by simulating a real world casino. Online poker. Cash games. They are very addicting due to the constant play and chance for winning large prizes. Tournaments. The can provide big prize pools. They also create a competitive atmosphere that can cause players to become addicted over time. Sports betting, in-play betting, also referred to as live betting. It enables wagers to be made on events in real time, such as a football match, resulting in ongoing excitement and prompt satisfaction. Conventional betting, it may be very addicting to place bets on different sporting events that have the potential for huge winnings. For example, during the Olympics, Virtual Sports Betting They are computer-generated virtual games and races which are available in a constant way. For example, a virtual horse or racing, box match, etc. Others Online Lotteries Purchasing lottery tickets online give the gambler the opportunity to win big prizes with little effort. Online Scratch Card Games They are cards with prizes. 
People need to scratch them with their mouse or fingers to reveal symbols, numbers, etc. Online Bingo It is a game in which players buy a card with numbers. Then a random number generator begins to display different numbers. Gamblers need to mark specific patterns on their cards. Lines Marking a complete horizontal, vertical or diagonal line. Full House Marking all the numbers on the card. Special Patterns Some games have unique patterns, like letters or shapes that players must complete to win. Some characteristics of online gambling applications that can cause this disorder on people are Quick rounds and instant results Providing immediate gratification Easy enrollment Attractive sign-up bonuses Free plays Promotions Loyalty programs Rewards Small bets making the gambler to assume it is less risky However frequent small transactions can accumulate high losses. Chat rooms and social features, creating communities. Easy deposits. Gambling applications that require the skills of the users create an illusion of control. This motivates players to believe that they can influence the results and get the money back. The ICD-11 establishes some boundaries with other disorders and conditions. These boundaries are similar, as in the gaming disorder. Boundary with hazardous. Gambling or betting. Boundary with gaming disorder. Boundary with bipolar and related disorders. Boundary with personality disorder. Boundary with obsessive compulsive disorder. Boundary with disorders due to substance use. Boundary with the effects of psychoactive substances, including medications. Activity The Real Case of Kelly Duration 30 minutes The objective of the activity is to raise awareness about the consequences of the gambling disorder. Step 1 Ask your learners to watch the following video. Kelly, a gambling addiction story. Step 2. Ask your learners to answer the following questions. What type of gambling did Kelly initially engage in? And what did she eventually move, causing her downfall? How much debt did Kelly accumulate within six months? And how did it escalate further? What extreme thoughts did Kelly experience as a result of their gambling addiction? What was the turning point that made Kelly to seek help? What form of therapy did the speaker undergo, and how long did it last? What activities are Kelly engaged to prevent her from gambling? Step 3. Review the answers among the group. Step 4. Conduct some reflections as a group through the following questions. Why do you think the speaker initially turned to online bingo as a form of escape? How might the transition from viewing money as a tangible asset to seeing it as just digits on the screen affect someone's gambling behavior? What role do you think the support from family or friends plays in dealing with gambling disorder? How can talking therapies and other forms of counseling help someone recover from gambling disorder? In what ways can engaging in hobbies and new activities like walking and adopting a pet, aid in the recovery process from addiction. Purchasing The compulsive buying shopping disorder is an uncontrolled shopping and spending, with unremitting delay in payments, accumulation of debts, and the inability to disengage cognitively or to apprehend the negative consequences of buying excesses or specified impulse control disorders, although there is no too many information about it. It is still not recognized by the latest edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Nowadays, youngsters and adults encounter different alternatives to buy in the digital world. E-commerce platforms. They offer a wide range of products with competitive pricing. 
Some of these platforms send products from the Asian market. Some others offer fast delivery options. For example, receiving the product on the next day after the purchase. Online stores, fashion and apparel stores, beauty and cosmetic stores, tech and gadget stores, home and lifestyle, luxury and design, babies and children, products, specialty stores, specialized products according to users' interests, etc. Second-hand platforms. It involves a whole community where users sign in to sell and buy their products. These practices belong to the sustainable economy. Social media marketplace. Users from social media, for example Facebook, sell new and old goods, services or information. Discount and flash sale websites. They provide limited time offers with high discounts on specific products. Activity. The online shopping features. Duration. 30 minutes. To learn some of the features of e-commerce that might cause compulsive buying shopping disorder. Step 1. Create the following cards. Create types of online shops. Cards. Card. 1. E-commerce platform Card 2. Fashion stores Card 3. Tech and gadget stores Card 4. Discount and flash sale sites Card 5. Luxury and designer stores Card 6. Specialty stores Create the cards with characteristics of each shop Card 7. Several products available I can get them in short periods of time. Card 8. Seasonal sales and constantly changing inventory. Card 9. The appeal of having the latest technology. Card 10. The urgency to buy the time-limited purchase product. Card 11. The appeal of having a luxury product. Card 12. The need to have all the toys of my collection. Step 2. Divide your learners into groups. Step 3. Divide your board into three sections. Section 1. Put the types of online shops cards. Section 2. Put the characteristics of each shop cards. Section 3. Matched side. Step 4. Each team should pass to the front and make a match with one card of the section 1 and one of the section 2. Correct match. If the match is correct, they tape both cards together and place them in a matched section. They will win one point. Incorrect match. If the match is incorrect, they place the cards back on the board and the next team takes their turn. They will not win any points. Step 5. Review all answers. E-commerce platform. Several products available. I can get them in short periods of time. Fashion stores, seasonal sales and constantly changing inventory. Tech and gadget stores, the appeal of having the latest technology. Discount and flash sale sites, the urgency to buy the time-limited purchase product. Luxury and designer stores, the appeal of having a luxury product. Specialty stores. The need to have all the toys of my collection. Step 6. The team that has more points is the winner. Step 7. Ask the following questions. So each group can make some reflections about this topic. Have you ever felt an urge to buy something online even if you did not need it? Can you share an example? How do you feel after making an impulse purchase online? Do you think that there are some strategies from shops that have a direct influence in people's shopping habits? Do you think that an impulse disorder give you eternal happiness? What can you do to control your purchases? Viewing Pornography An Internet Pornography Viewing Disorder IPD, is a problematic behavior where people consume pornography in an excessive way, affecting their lives. It is also known as pornography addiction, 
compulsive pornography use, etc. It is not yet formally recognized by the ICD-11 or the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Pornography is available in many online ways, such as internet websites and applications, streaming sites, users can stream porn content, download sites, users can download pornographic content to their devices for offline viewing, social media platforms, users can create and publish pornographic content. However, due to specific regulations in some platforms, users can share this content through private messages and groups. Pornographic subscriptions, premium websites, paid subscriptions to websites that offer exclusive and higher quality content. Community platforms, subscription services where users pay for direct access to creators' explicit content. Sharing, clouds, torrents, and other peer-to-peer -peer networks where users share pornographic files. Private sharing, direct sharing between people via messaging apps or email virtual reality porn, VR websites, websites offering pornographic videos in this format, live cam sites, webcam services, users can watch and interact with live performers, interactive features, options to pay for online private shows or specific actions by the performers, erotic texts, ebooks, erotic stories, novels and comics, fan fiction sites, communities where users share explicit fan fiction, television, adult channels, television channels that through a subscription offer pornographic content, adult DVDs. Some of the features that could engage a person in an internet pornography viewing disorder are Engaging in real-time communication with performers might result in a more customized and captivating experience. Networks on which pornography consumers communicate and exchange new recommendations. Anonymity can make the person consume explicit content in a constant way. Lessening embarrassment. Possibilities to tip performers and request certain actions. Options for regular, easy payments for accessing to premium content. Curated, explicit collections that are carefully selected in order to promote binge-watching. Websites with more innovative or extreme material have the potential to increase users' watching habits. Activity. The real case of Rob. Duration. 45 minutes. The objective of the activity is to raise awareness about the problematic behaviors associated with pornography and the stigma surrounding them. Step 1. Ask your learners to watch the video. A porn addict. What I wish I'd known about porn. Step 2. Ask your learners to answer the following questions. At what age and how did the speaker first encounter pornography? why he thought it was a safe environment, how was his view towards women due to viewing pornography, when did the speaker first realize that their use of pornography might be an addiction, how was Rob watching pornography so their family wouldn't notice his behavior, what role did the speaker have in the community that made his addiction particularly challenging. How did the speaker's community react when he disclosed their addiction? Why would Rob prefer to tell he was a drug addict than a porn viewer? Step 3. Review the answers among the group. Step 4. Conduct some reflections as a group through the following questions. What could parents do to prevent that their kids have a similar moment than Rob when he was four years old? Why do you think the speaker associated shame more strongly with pornography than with other drug use? How does secrecy contribute to Rob's addiction? How social stigma contributes in the development and maintenance of these types of behaviors? What are the potential effects of shame-based reactions from a family or community 
when someone discloses a personal addiction? In what ways could open discussions about pornography, addiction, reduce the stigma and help individuals seeking recovery? Can the internet, pornography viewing disorder, affect our relationships with partners? Step 5. Divide your learners into groups. Step 6. With the key points obtained in the reflection time, ask your learners to create posters with important insights about internet pornography viewing disorder. Step 7. Present each group's posters and paste them around the facilities so other learners can raise awareness about this behavior. Social networking. The social media disorder is characterized by an excessive use of social media platforms. Some authors also name this as social media addiction. This behavior is not included in the ICD-11. While the exclusion of social media addiction from the DSM-5 may give the impression that it is not a legitimate mental disorder, there is a growing body of evidence suggesting otherwise. There are different social media networks where not only young people but also adults get engaged. Personal networks. People have their own individual page where they post updates, photos, videos, etc. They connect with friends, family or whoever the user wants. Professional networks are used to create professional connections. Users can create CVs, look for jobs, etc. Media sharing networks. Users mostly share media content such as videos, images and music. Discussion forums. People can ask a specific question, participate in debates, etc. according to a specific topic. Content curation networks. They allow users to discover, save and share specific content from their platform. For example, images, articles, etc. Blogging. Platforms. People can create and publish blog posts, follow other bloggers, etc. Anonymous social networks. Individuals can share anonymous confessions, thoughts, opinions, etc. Interest-based networks. Platforms for specific hobbies or interests. Social shopping networks. They combine e-commerce with social networking, where users can share products, follow brands, etc. Microblogging platforms to share short posts. Dating networks, platforms designed for romantic connections. Social review networks, users post their reviews and ratings of specific products, places, services, movies, etc. Private social networks, controlled access networks, which are more used by organizations. Live streaming networks, allow users to stream content in real time. This disorder could start through specific small habits, where the user starts feeling pleasure, turning into an obsession as time passes by. Activity, social media habits, Duration, one hour. The objective of the activity is to identify social media habits and how these habits shape online presence. Step one, provide to each of the Leona one of the following persons. Is a person who, in an effort to increase visibility and impact, employs hashtags in every post. is a person who, in order to improve their photos, never posts a picture without first using filters and editing software, is someone who shares every second of their day with their followers and updates their stories on in excessive basis, is a person who is constantly searching and disseminating the newest viral challenges, trends, etc. Is someone who is always checking to see how many likes and reactions they have received on their postings. They have an obsession with gaining them 
but only the positive ones. Is a person who, most of the time, participates in conversations and offers advice in social media groups. Is someone who ensures that all friends participate in the conversation by tagging them in nearly every post, meme, comment, video, etc. Is a person who enjoys sharing old pictures on social media and thinking back on memorable occasions. Is a person who regularly makes and takes part in quizzes and surveys, involving their friends to answer the questions. Is an individual who enthusiastically uses social media to publicize events, whether they are organizing, participating, or only sharing the excitement. is a person who posts and shares everything without filtering. An individual making a concerted effort to break through on social media by selecting content, working with brands and utilizing well-chosen hashtags. Is a person that consistently uplifts their following with motivational quotations, inspirational tales and positive energy is a person who prefers to have private talks over public posts and spends a lot of time in direct messaging, is a person who frequently stirs up controversy by jumping into intense disputes and argumentative subjects in the comment sections, is a person who regularly goes live to interact in real time with their audience, for example, in gaming, Q&A sessions, casual conversation, etc. Is someone who selects, according to specific interests, excellent information from a variety of sources. Is a person whose primary mode of expression is a torrent of emojis, sometimes making it difficult to understand what is being said. Is a person that never misses a notification and always reacts right away to messages, comments, and alerts. Is a person who enjoys showcasing beautiful scenery and well-planned cultural experiences from their travels on social media. Is a person who never posts, but spends many hours scrolling. Is someone who is always sharing or creating funny memes. Step 2. Each learner should provide a creative nickname to this profile. They should write a story of how this person developed a problematic behavior due to their constant habits. For example, a person that never misses a notification and always reacts right away to messages, comments and alerts. Nickname, the ultra-fast respondent story. It all started innocently enough. Sarah, a marketing student at a university, was naturally drawn to social media. Every time she received a notification, she would reply as fast as she could. Every sound and vibration of her mobile felt like a small victory. For her, it was a sign that someone, somewhere, was thinking of her. But soon, Sarah's relationship with her phone began to change. She noticed that she could not take more than a few minutes without checking her notifications. She would stop in the middle of a conversation to reply to a comment. Even at her college lectures, she would unconsciously end reaching her phone to see if she had missed anything. She started waking up in the middle of the night, just to check if she had any messages from friends. Sarah's grades began to suffer. She was spending so much time on social media, especially in the notifications she received. She found herself becoming increasingly anxious about missing notifications or not responding quickly enough. She would get a sinking feeling in her stomach every time she saw the notification bubble grow, fearing she was letting someone down if she did not reply immediately. 
Sarah decided she needed a change. She deleted all social media apps and turned off notifications. It was terrifying for her at first, but as days passed, she felt lighter. The constant buzzing of her phone had been replaced with silence, and through that silence, she began to hear and rediscover herself. In time, Sarah found a healthier balance. She reintroduced social media into her life, but this time on her terms. Notifications were off, and she set specific moments to check her accounts, ensuring that her phone no longer dictated her day. Sarah had regained control, and with it, a sense of peace she did not have in years. Step 3. Ask your learners to share their stories with the rest of the group. Step 4. Write on the board the different person's nicknames. Step 5. Ask to your learners to look at the different characters' nicknames and analyze if there are some habits that they are doing in an obsessive manner. Ask them to think about what practices they should do to reduce these obsessive behaviors. Cyberbullying UNICEF defines cyberbullying as bullying with the use of digital technologies. It can take place on social media, messaging platforms, gaming platforms, and mobile phones. It is a repeated behavior aimed at scaring, angering, or shaming those who are targeted. There are different types of cyberbullying behaviors. Online harassment. It can be manifested in direct and indirect harassment. Direct harassment is done through the victim's online accounts, such as email. Indirect harassment is when the abuser attacks the victim through media that does not have a private and direct relationship with the user, for example, forums. Online threats. Any threatening or aggressive communication, remark or message made by digital means with the intention of harming, scaring, or coercing the target is referred to as an online threat. They can be explicit or implied. Dissing is also known as denigration. The attacker has this behavior in order to reduce the victim's reputation. It can occur in different ways. Spread fake information. Humiliate the person publicly. Posting defamatory content. Create fake profiles with harmful information under the victim's identity. Attack social media accounts of the victim. Etc. Masquerading. Masquerading is the practice of a bully using a fictitious account, email address, or social media presence to harass or trick someone online. Masquerading is the first step to carry out other behaviors. Catfishing, phishing, digital identity theft, doxing or doxing. It is when the attacker reveals private and personal information about the victims without their permission. Outing. It is when a person discloses the victim's gender identity or sexual orientation to cause harm. Online exclusion. It is when the attacker does not allow the victim to be part in online activities, such as group chats, asking others to delete the victim from their social media networks, etc. Cyberstalking. It is when a person has a compulsive monitoring, control and harassment of the victim through online tools. Electronic insults. When the attacker insults their victims through flaming, trolling and other practices. Happy slapping. The Cambridge Dictionary defines it as the activity of attacking someone and filming the attack, especially with a mobile phone. Sextortion is also known as online sexual coercion. It is when the attacker obtains online sexual content from the victim through different strategies, such as threats, tricks, etc. Cyberchondria Cyberchondria is a problematic or unhelpful behavior pattern that describes excessive or repetitive online health-related information searching related to an enhanced level of health anxiety. Cyberchondria sufferers frequently are involved in compulsive internet health research, 
spending a huge amount of time searching for symptoms or health diseases. They visit excessively websites, forums, or medical databases to look for a diagnosis. People's anxiety increases with the amount of information they read about possible illnesses that match their symptoms. Also, some of them have a tendency to envision the worst-case situations, intensifying unnecessary feelings of fear, tension, worriedness, etc. Some of these scenarios are Common cold becomes lung cancer. Headache leads to fear of a brain tumor. Skin rash and fear of Lyme disease. Heart palpitations lead to fear of a heart attack. Some people with cyberchondria try to self-diagnose in an attempt to find answers. They could even manage to persuade themselves that they have an uncommon or dangerous condition based on the information available online. When they are convinced about their illness, they may question the validity of a doctor's diagnosis or words of comfort, thinking that something important has not been looked properly. This distrust can result in increased worry and an ongoing cycle of searching further. Furthermore, these lack of confidence can make them look for extra opinions from doctors, as well as having extra tests, putting their finances into high risks. Activity. The diseases for one symptom. Duration. 45 minutes. The objective of the activity is to provide learners knowledge about cyberchondria, its development, and the value of using critical thinking when looking for health-related information online. Step 1. Ask your learners to read the information on this sub-chapter about cyberchondria. Step 2. Divide your learners into groups. Step 3. Provide to each of the group one typical symptom. For example, headache, sore throat, stomach ache, skin rash, back pain, sweats, dry mouth, fatigue. Step 4. Learners should conduct a brief web search to determine a possible diagnosis of the symptom. They should identify three potential diagnoses, mild, moderate, worst case scenario. Motivate them to be realistic for the normal diagnosis and creative for the worst case scenario. Step 5. Every group should present the three diagnoses. Step 6. Make some reflections together through the following questions. How easy is to find several diseases for the same symptom? Do you think this can cause confusion? How easy is to find out a wrong self-diagnosis? Why can people with cyberchondria have unneeded anxiety? What might be the consequences of believing the worst-case scenario? How did you feel when you found out the three different types of diagnosis? Why critical thinking is important when we search for medical information to match a symptom? Remind learners that although the internet may be a useful resource for health information, it should only be used carefully and in combination with a medical professional opinion.